Michelle Nesky, the Posh PA, and we are again talking about that income, talking about that money, and I'm going to be answering for you, what are the highest paid PA specialties? That's right. One of the most common questions I get asked from PA students that are transitioning into practice are what are the highest paid specialties that PAs can work in? So today I'm going to give you the list of the top 10 highest paid PA specialties. But before I do that, if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button. I am here every week dropping new videos to help you get into PA school, become a successful student, and a fulfilled practicing PA. Now, some of the specialties on this list may surprise you. And before I tell you about the top 10, I want to put the caveat out there that this is the average as of 2021 in each specialty in the top 10 highest paid specialties. And I want you to know that these numbers will fluctuate based on practice setting, based on location and area of the country that you're working in. But according to the data, these are the top 10 as of 2021. And the number one specialty, the highest paid specialty is, what do you think? Drum roll, please. It is CT and vascular surgery. That's right. CT and vascular, so cardiothoracic and vascular surgery is coming in at about 147,000 200 per year. So that's the salary per year average for a CT surgery PA in the United States. Now, why is that the most highest paid specialty? Probably has to do with the complexity of patients, the hours that you're working, the time on call, um, the procedures that you're billing for. And so there's a lot of components that go in to that salary. So it's important to think about this. And you may notice on this list, that the specialties here are going to involve more procedure based specialties. Okay. So that's something to think about. Number two, that's coming in just behind CT surgery is not surprising to me at all. Dermatology, right? Dermatology average PA makes about $146,000 per year. A lot of uh, procedures done in dermatology, both in medical dermatology, which, you know, focuses more on skin diseases and conditions, as well as cosmetic dermatology, Botox, fillers, things like that. Those are very high revenue generating practices. And so salaries for PAs in that specialty can be a lot higher. And it is reflected here as the number two highest paid specialty. Number three is coming in at emergency medicine. Emergency medicine is one of the most popular specialties for PAs. Why? Because it's the emergency room, right? There's a lot of action happening. There's a lot of procedures that can be done there. And it's also favorable in terms of shift work. So you can work more of like three 12 hour shifts rather than, you know, eight, five hour shifts. And that's something that's really appealing to a lot of people. And that average salary is coming in at about 129,000 per year for an ERPA. Again, those numbers are going to fluctuate. The next one that's coming in is more of a broad-based category, and that's at $127,775 per year. And that's really any surgical subspecialty. So what do I mean by subspecialty? I mean um, like ENT, so ear, nose, and throat specialty, um, urology, you know, uh, pediatric surgery. So things where you're doing a lot of hands-on procedures, you're taking care of patients both in and out of the hospital, um, and any of those surgical subspecialties are going to also be a well-paid area to go into. And again, the average PA working in surgical subspecialties, again, about $128,000. The next one was surprising to me, um, and that is occupational medicine, $125,600 per year. So occupational medicine, really helping people in terms of rehabilitation and coming out of the hospital or outside of the hospital. So a really important part of the medical care. And I was a little bit surprised by that, um, but it is a great specialty to go into for PAs. And again, one of the top five highest paid. The next one is going to be critical care. So critical care means ICU based care. So any area of the ICU, whether that's a specialized adult or pediatric ICU, those PAs are going to make about $125,000 per year a lot of interventional care done in the ICU. So it makes sense. Um, a lot of procedures, longer hours, a lot of time on call, high acuity patients. Makes sense that these PAs are going to be paid at a little bit of a higher rate. The next one we're hitting is neurosurgery. Neurosurgery PA is making about $124,000 per year. Again, very complex patients, 
um, requiring a lot of high level care, both in and out of the hospital. Um, so a lot of your surgical PAs are gonna be doing both in hospital and out of hospital work. So what do I mean by that? You're gonna be doing, um, some PAs will go to the OR, not all of them will, but you will see you know, PAs both in the hospital taking care of patients in the post-operative setting, and then obviously when they transition out of the hospital into clinic. So you have that clinic part where they're getting diagnosed and then scheduling their surgery. So you have that piece, then you have the in-hospital care, and then you have the post-operative care. So there's a lot of steps involved in that, and especially in the neurosurgical setting. So not surprising that they are on the top 10. The next one is urgent care. Urgent care ranks right up there for me with ER in terms of a very, very popular specialty for PAs because of being able to work shifts where you can work maybe three 12 hour shifts instead of you know, a regular work week. And those PAs are gonna make about $123,000 across the country. Again, that will fluctuate a little bit. Urgent care, dealing with um, some of the lower acuity uh, emergencies that people will come in for uh, that don't require ER care. Um, and so again, a lot of procedures being done there as well. So not surprising that urgent care PAs are going to have um, be in the top 10 in this specialty. The next one is radiology. Also surprising to me, 122,000 per year. Um, you can work in interventional radiology where you are putting in you know, central lines and what we call um, tunneled catheters for patients or doing procedures through interventional radiology, whether that's draining fluid from lungs or abdomens or things like that. So there's that kind of interventional radiology. And then there's also PAs who do more nuclear medicine radiology where you're in you know, more of a traditional radiographic setting, not necessarily doing um, that interventional care. So a lot of areas in radiology where PAs can be participatory. And again, here it is coming in at number nine as one of the top 10 highest paid PA specialties. So something really cool to look into and was a surprising one for me on the list. And the next one is again, the very last one, the top 10 is going to be plastic surgery. That's coming in at about $122,000. Again, plastic surgery, along with the other surgical subspecialties here, um, going to require a lot of in and out of hospital care. Um, a lot of procedures, a lot of wound care, things that um, you know PAs can take care of. So not surprising that they round out the top 10 highest PA specialties. Now, I want to point out to you that the national total, so the national average for specialties across the board was about $120,000 a year for you know, a PA. So that's really important to know um, that in any specialty that you might be in. So for example, I'm in oncology, you know, the national average is going to be about $120,000. So, but it is not surprising to me that many of the specialties on this list are surgical specialties or have a high level of procedures, um, hands-on interventions and things like that, with the exception of maybe occupational medicine in there. But were you surprised by any of these? If you were, drop them in the comments. Are you interested in any of these subspecialties? Um, let me tell you, the average salary for PAs, I have this in another video and it is affected by many, many other things. So be sure you check that video out as well to really understand how much PAs actually make both in specialty areas of medicine, but also in general areas of medicine, family practice, pediatrics, things like that. It's important to know what the averages are as you're looking for jobs and really know what your market is, you know, where you are, um, where you are living, what is the average salary, where you live, not only in that specialty, but across the country. So this information is important as you are looking to go into jobs, specifically if you're looking to go into specialty medicine um, as a PA. So top 10 highest paid specialties, Gonna list them out again one time for you. Number one, CT vascular surgeries, cardiothoracic and vascular surgery. Number two, dermatology. Number three, emergency medicine. Number four, any surgical subspecialty. Number five, occupational medicine. Number six, critical care. Seven is neurosurgery. Eight is urgent care. Nine is radiology. And number 10 was plastic surgery. This is as of 2021 for the AAPA salary report. Now, I am going to be doing my next video on this corresponding rates of burnout in these subspecialties. So make sure you subscribe to not miss that one. And I'll see you again soon.